What is up everyone? My name is Jonathan and today we are doing a Lightroom tutorial. We're going to go over just how to import photos, how to create a new catalog, and then well, you got to create a new catalog, then import the photos. So, and then we're just going to do some basic editing. We're going to go through the tabs on the right hand side. Some of it looks super confusing. You're like, what does this do? I have no idea what this is. I don't know. I don't know what a hue saturation luminance slider is. I don't know. So that's what we're going to go over. All my stuff's in the description below. Feel free to like this video, subscribe to this channel. If you want more content like what's about to happen three times a week, at least that's my goal. We're doing pretty good so far. We are in we are in Lightroom right now. So if you're going to open up your screen, it's going to look like this. You're probably not going to have a catalog name up here. You might depends on what you did when you first started. But in order to create a new catalog, you just simply go to new catalog, or you can import photos into the catalog that you're currently in. If that's the catalog you want your photos to be in. If you're creating a large catalog with uh, a lot of photos, all of your photos, let's say you just created one 2020 and you have all of your photos in there, I highly recommend doing using the features built into Lightroom for uh, sorting and giving them filters and tags and all that stuff. So you can just type in wildlife and boom, all comes up. But let's create a new catalog. We're gonna call this one for me, Switzerland. All this does is uh, apply a little bit of noise reduction. Here, we'll, I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll show you. So I'm not going to move these photos anywhere. I want to add these photos in the location they're in to the catalog where the catalog is. If you don't want to do that, you can move them to someplace else or you can copy them to a new location and then you'll have two copies of the photos that you're working with. One in the original location and now in the new location or you can copy and you can convert them to DNG files. These are Canon raw files. You can do that as well. I'm going to add them. I want them to stay there and I'm going to use this def, uh, develop settings, import preset right here. So click on import and then it will import all of your photos. So when we go to the develop tab, Probably should have waited. I was doing pretty good for screen recording and doing this stuff at the same time. So I have actually edited this photo before. I think I edited this photo in, uh, not in Lightroom. I think I did it in Adobe Camera Raw. So let's find a photo that I haven't touched. So this photo I haven't touched. This is of, uh, we were staying in right here some, I think we were staying in one of these rooms. I think it might have been that one. Oh, I don't remember now. We're staying somewhere right here. There's, there's a little bridge right where we were uh, staying. I don't remember what this river was called. Lufthansa or something. Anyways, so let's see. What does this do upon import? I know it does. So we do some noise reduction upon import. I don't need it to be 50. Um, I know, what's not that one again? Lens corrections, I know we do lens corrections. I know I automatically click on remove the chromatic aberrations. I want the profile for the lens used. This was just a regular standard Canon EFS 17 to 85 lens, nothing special. So let's edit this one. So we have this photo. This is the exposure. That should be pretty self-explanatory. This is going to change the overall brightness of the image in its entirety, the whole thing. Contrast, same thing. You're going to affect the contrast of the image across the entire image. Highlights only affects the highlights. So you see it affects the skies. It'll affect the these lights some. So we're going to bring that down. Shadows, same thing. It's going to affect only the 
shadows. You can see it right here. When you have shadows, you can see the range that it's affecting. It's this between here and here. So you can see that that's being affected by that. Whites, all the way up at the top, it affects the whites. So if you hold Alt, you can see what whites are blown out. So those, there's no color left. There's no data left in there. It's just white. When you bring it down, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. Depending on the photo, I like it to not have any but I mean those are lights so you can see it's not really changing a whole lot until now so you could do that and you still are retaining all of the color information for where the white most of the white is except for where it's pure white or a solid color blacks same thing you can drag this down you can drag it up it affects only the blacks you can see here this is the blacks this is the whites or the, I'm sorry this is the shadows and then you have the overall exposure, and then you have the highlights, and then you have the whites. And you can click on this and drag this down. And you can click here and drag that up or down. You can click on the highlights, drag those down. You can grab the whites, push those down a little bit. You can grab the blacks, push those up a little bit. And then the texture does what you think. Let's zoom in here. It adds texture magical and it's texture I pretty much never use this pretty much and then clarity um, gives it that kind of to me it that's when you're starting to venture off into the overbaked look by using a ton of clarity you can certainly use some you can see it kind of cleans it up gives it a little bit of punch but you don't like I'm never going to probably use it like this uh, the other side to doing this is that it creates a lot of noise when you're using a ton of clarity so dehaze does kind of what you'd expect it to do it brings down a lot of the blacks and the shadows it brings down obviously the image overall but it does it tries to clean up the image you can see it kind of flattens out the um, the highlights and the whites up here and the exposure some but I feel like not as much as so it kind of flattens those out and pushes the blacks down as well vibrance does what you'd expect it to do it makes the colors more vibrant it kind of gives those a lift saturation does exactly what you'd expect it to do it doesn't change the luminosity it just changes the overall saturation of the colors and we could spend all day going through these sliders so we're just going to knock out a couple more really fast so this is um, this is a exposure curve so you can bring down so this would be your this is your shadows you can bring those down this is your darks you can bring the darks up it tells you right here what they are this is your lights your highlights so you can change those using a, a tonal curve or a exposure curve or you can go over here and you can affect just the red channel you can pull the reds down make it a little more green you can push them up make it a little more magenta red you can do the same thing with green you can do super magenta you can do very green blue is going to be blue and yellow so this looks more like a cold scene and this definitely looks more kind of warm I'm just doing random things hue and saturation so this is pretty cool you can change the hue of a color so you can go from red to orange orange to yellow yellow to uh, like a greenish color that's mud let's we'll call that mud it's because it's gross and then the saturation you can change the saturation of those sliders so we can bring down the reds we can bring down the oranges the yellows you can see it takes it out of the lights there green takes all the saturation out of these trees over here that's pretty self-explanatory luminance it affects the brightness of those colors so yellow you can see the the, the lights here 
changing and then a little bit up here where it's yellow you can see it's changing the brightness and the darkness of the yellows same thing for we'll do green changes the saturation of those trees over there or all and that just gives you all of those options that we were just looking at color grading this is actually a really new feature I love this option because it gives you the effect the ability to affect the white balance or the color tone of the image in your highlights your shadows or your midtones so highlights if I wanted this to be more yellow and orange I would go to my highlights and change it to yellow and orange or if I wanted it to be more blue I'd go to blue if I want it but I want it to be more orangey and we can turn up the, the brightness Bl do a pretty good job of blending the so it's not super contrasty between uh, what we're affecting so then you could change the shadows if you wanted the shadows to be a little more cold you could change those to a little more of a blue so I really like the color grading this is a very handy tool if you get used to this I highly recommend uh, or you can change the whole thing I highly recommend getting comfortable using this this is very very helpful I'm so glad that they added this so we'll go out on to details details is what kind of self-explanatory this is going to sharpen the entire image this is going to be the radius of what you're sharpening detail adds more detail masking so if you hold this uh, click on the little slider and hit alt the white lines is where it's going to be applying the sharpening so if you don't want it to you know you don't want it to sharpen the water you don't want it to sharpen the clouds you can drag this down and it's just going to sharpen basically the buildings pretty much so that's what I would want I wouldn't want it to be sharpening the water noise reduction uh, a luminance noise reduction so we we can drag that up if we want uh, let's see if we can see so the problem with noise reduction is that it can make it look muddy so you can see as I drag this slider up you start to see some of the detail go away so you can try and save some of the I don't usually do extremes on this stuff. I just do, I'll, I'll just do a little bit. I'm not gonna do a whole bunch. I, I don't use this tool drastically. This is something that I just use a little bit at a time. Uh, where were we? Detail, lens correction. So this is something that I always do in every photo and that's why it was a part of the import preset. So I always remove the chromatic aberrations. I'm always going to enable the profile corrections for the lens. So if a lens has any vignetting or any barrel distortion, having a profile, so it has most, it, it has a lot of the lenses that are available by Canon. It has lenses that are available by tons of different brands already built into Lightroom Classic. This is Lightroom Classic. So it already has a bunch of these brands, then you would just click on one of the brands, whichever brand your lens is. So if I was shooting with my drone, I would click on DJI, I would go down to Phantom 4, and then this would be, that's what it would be for, this would be what it, the barrel distortion and any vignetting that is pre-programmed in for that, but that's not what this is. There we go. So you can see the distortion it changes the distortion of the what it thinks is or what it is for that lens changes the distortion for that lens so you can do this manually you can change the distortion you can see the barrel distortion you can constrain to crop so then you can go out like this and then it'll automatically crop the photo in we're not going to do either of those things and then you can do this is kind of like the chromatic aberrations where if there's any of those yellow or those blue or green or purple lines where there's a very harsh change in color like white to black you know you'll see somebody's in front of a window they might have that little bit of haze around the window or the window itself 
may have a little haze on the inside of the windows. It's funny, I'm over here moving my hands around like you can see me. If you prefer that, let me know in the comments below. If you prefer to see the person that is talking, let me know. So we're doing the lens corrections, so you can change a lot of this manually. You can add some vignetting if you wanted to. This is actually in an attempt to correct vignetting because some of times lenses, they'll have a little bit of black in the corner or whatever. So you could add it there technically. Now we're going to go down to transform. Transform is a very good tool to have. So this is where you're going to correct your verticals. Like if these buildings aren't straight, we can just click vertical and it will adjust the image how it thinks it needs to be. It's not perfect. Uh, definitely check. I usually click, you know, hover my mouse over something down here so I can see if it is indeed straight now. And it actually looks, looks pretty straight. Looks pretty straight. Or you can just do auto. Or if you just want the horizon, if it's like a, you know, a picture of the mountains in the, in the background with, you know, the sun setting or whatever, and you just want to click level, this will do its best to level out that photo. It's best to just get it really close in camera. So, because this will crop your photo if it has to rotate pretty far. Otherwise there will be white on the corners. Like if this picture was super crooked and I had to rotate it really far. It could look like that and that wouldn't look good so so we're just gonna go to ready we're almost done transform and now we go down to effects I literally probably never use this so this is just going to be changing uh, adding an av a vignette so super dramatic I never use these please only use these sparingly there is a time and a place however most of the time I've never seen a vignette where I'm like, oh yeah, that made sense. So I'm probably gonna do something a little more round. I'm to drag that feather all the way up. Just a very subtle, very, very, very subtle. Like right there, probably. And calibration. Uh, I've literally never used these, never. This is just more correct. So now we're going to change the shadows. Change. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. You're just colorizing the photos pretty much. You're, but we're not going to use that. And that is everything. Thank you for watching. If you want to see the next videos and we're going to go over the individual tools up in the top right hand of the develop module, hit the subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification bell because just because you're subscribed doesn't mean it's always going to push the video to you. So make sure you hit the notification bell before you leave. Click on a link down below. If you're a content creator and you're making videos, Make sure you check out TubeBuddy. It is all the way in the bottom of the description. It is a great tool. They have a free and a paid version. If you use that link and you do a paid version, I do get a little tiny piece. So that is all. Thank you for watching. God bless. Stay safe. And we will see you in the next one.